Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on a browning reel. You don't see browning reels around too much. A little bit of a backstory. Uh, when Mitchell went bankrupt, uh, browning bought them. So there was a brief period of time that uh, browning owned the Mitchell brand and browning was contracting for uh, fishing reels and it it's quite possible that this is either a Mitchell design, a later design, or a, uh, a byproduct of it. I don't think it was made by him. This one actually says made in Bangladesh. I can't remember seeing too many fishing reels that were made in Bangladesh. So uh, I like this one too. So this one <laughs> has a unique uh, feature here. It has the anthony reverse on, the anthony reverse off, and it has the uh, center. So that center one, I was waiting for that, I was trying to find it, that centers your bail back and that would be a good one for a, uh, a lever, an easy cast lever. But there's no real <laughs> real reason to use that on a, on a pond reel like this without the easy cast feature. So uh, we're going to take this reel apart. We'll show you how it was made. We'll show you how to service this reel and how to keep it fishing for years to come. If you enjoy that uh, type of stuff, if you like reel repair as an art, as a hobby, uh, as a business, and you want to learn more, then I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. I try to give a little bit of the history of the reel while I'm doing the reel itself, give you a little bit of an idea of how it's used, and uh, general principles behind the service of it, so that you can learn to do it yourself, and learn a little bit more about the fishing reel industry. Well, we took the handle off. It had a, a, a screw that was rotating as we uh, spun the reel. That usually means it's a through screw for the axle. You remove that and then what I like to do is I like to reattach that to the handle so that I don't lose it and to put it into a parts tray. My parts tray is simple. It's a fast food container. For now, I've used milk jugs and other things in the past. For now, it's a fast food container. Next up, I'm going to remove the uh, spool. You do that by taking that uh, adjuster nut and rotating it in a counterclockwise manner. That has some nice sized drags in it for a small reel. I just did a uh, reel not too long ago, only had a single drag in it. That looks like it has more. We'll get underneath that in a moment. This has a click ratchet and some spool height adjusters that come off next. That goes into my parts tray. And uh, well, the next thing you want to look at is, can I remove the side plate without removing the rotor? If you have a line that breaks here, then that side plate can be separated without taking the rotor off first. If it travels up underneath, like it's doing here, then you can't remove the side plate without taking the rotor off first. To do that then, we're going to remove the set screw, which is holding that rotor nut from rotating. And yep, that goes in the parts tray as well. Put that in a separate corner. And then this is probably a 10 millimeter nut. And what you want to do is you want to test, before you go too far, you want to test to see which way is going to be loosened. I know that kind of sounds like all nuts should be righty tighty lefty loosey, if you will, but that's not always the case with fishing reels. And if you're meeting resistance, turning it the traditional counterclockwise to remove it, try it the other way. In this case, this one did remove traditionally. And now we should be able to remove this rotor just simply by pulling up. And I've found these that these uh, browning reels over time have been quality reels. Uh, this one's got a little sticker in here for some reason. I don't know if that's an inspected by sticker or that's something that just got trapped underneath. But check your bail, make sure it's operating nice and easily. What I like to do with this is I like to take penetrating oil and just kind of work it into the seams on both of those. And sometimes these bales just start sticking because they get dry, there's dirt in there, they get grease that just kind of loads it up and evaporates. 
and as long as it's working fine, it, uh, it can, you can work on it without taking it apart. Here's your trip. Your trip is going to ride up this little ramp here. That little ramp is going to push this up and it's going to cause the bale to close. Just like that. Alright, set that off to the side. And now we have access that we can take the plate off. We also have the, the bearing and pinion gear inside. And because, uh, well, we don't know. So let's just take the three screws out of this first. And as I mentioned, these are generally pretty nice reels for pond reels. This is a small size reel. It's a uh, SFS. I know the F and the S is flex system. I'm not quite sure what the S is. This one got sold as part of a rod and reel combination. And uh, somebody brought the rod and reel combination in. It still had the zip tie holding the reel to the rod. So I'm going to guess that these were sold in well, places like Walmart and the like. And that uh, this one's never been serviced because it was never off the pole. So this is probably a reel from the 1980s, maybe 1990s at, at most. It does have that plastic or graphite case to it. So it's a little bit later. But the, uh, the actual servicing of this reel seems to have been never. Three screws are out. They all are the same size. I always check that. We should be able to remove this now. And you can see just a bunch of dried grease. Next up then, we would like to remove the axle shaft. We can do that by removing the screw that's holding it to the cross line block. And this is a good place to tell you to take pictures. I, uh, I got lucky with the last one I just did. I didn't take a picture and uh, that cross wind block could have mounted a number of ways. I just got lucky to pick the right way. But uh, I do take pictures. I use the video here as a backup. If I get stuck, I go back and I rewind the video and I take a look. All right, I'm going to just clean this off while I have it. Just a paper towel for that. I always like the least abrasive method. Now we should be able to remove the main gear. And you can see that, well, we just have a whole bunch of old grease and dirt in there. That's not grease. Be careful with that. That one is a little um, plastic piece. It's a shoulder that works the anti-reverse on this. Whoa, that stuff is dried. All right. It's almost like you need a chisel. That, uh, that's another indication that the reel hasn't been serviced since new. And a little bit of a scraper. So how does that grease get in there? That grease gets in there because it's thrown off by centrifugal force. At one point in time it was in the teeth of this gear and that's what you, you're aiming for to reinstall. There is a, a valley right here on this plastic piece. That will become important when we go to reassemble the reel. I'm going to just flood that now with a little penetrating oil just to, to do the final cleanup of that inside. Get as much of that dirt off as we can. Once you do that, grab a hard brush. This is a brass brush. You can use a toothbrush. You don't have to go out and buy brushes or anything. Clear all the channels in the teeth. Inspect them to make sure on both sides that they're not chipped, cracked, broken, or otherwise uh, a problem. And then what we can do is we can take some fishing reel uh, grease. I use pen precision reel grease. Um, I really don't have a preference or whose fishing reel grease you're using. Every manufacturer will tell you to use theirs. Well, I don't think that the fishing reel manufacturers are manufacturing the greases. And I think as long as it's a reel designated for marine uses for fishing reels, that you're fine. At least that's been my experience. We've greased that up. We're going to put that into our side tray now. And a lot of what you do when you do fishing reel repair is simply clean up the old parts, inspect them to make sure that they're not broken, replace them if they are and if replacements are available, and uh, just get it back out there fishing again. All right, well that one's fine. We've, 
The important part of this one is the back side, the part with the slot in it and the face. That's going to run on the oscillation gear stud, which is right here. And we're going to take that off so that we can clean behind that. And I generally just grab it with a micro pliers. And as you can see, we have accumulated greases that have spun off of that and are sitting in the back of the case. Well, why is that important if they've been in the back of the case and not touching anything, right? It becomes important because it traps dirt and it's not uncommon for that dirt to break free and cause a problem. So go ahead while you have the reel apart. It doesn't take any long, that much longer to get this old grease out of here. Probably makes for boring uh, videos, but it doesn't take any longer to do. So please go ahead and do that to the best of your ability. And I'm just using a little pick to clean that out. And then we can, can keep moving on here. Yeah. All right, that's pretty good. Last part up then is to remove the bearing and the pinion gear shaft. This is held on by two screws that kind of acts as a collar. There is no uh, tie down collar on this one. The components seem to be very good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at pot metal, if you will, for the, the gears. I am, but I'm also looking at a reel where if you catch a four pound fish on it, it's probably out of the ordinary. It's a, it's a lower sized reel. And uh, here you can see we've got a couple of things going on. This is our anti-reverse click ratchet here, right here. And then we've got some, some greases underneath. I'm just going to pull that bearing. And I want to just again flood this. That's a plastic piece. I imagine that that's a collar that you can actually remove, but it seems a little brittle. And if it's been on there for 20 years, I don't think it's worth trying to pry it off just for the sake of prying it off. Make sure it's clean. Check the top, make sure that the points are good. If the points weren't good, you wouldn't be able to uh, stop the reel. Oil the bearing. I oil bearings. I don't grease them. That bearing was running fine. It also has a shim washer on top of it there. I'll probably knock it off. Well, I didn't, but that's a shim washer that goes between your bearing and your rotor. So just note that when it's time to reinstall. And then the last part of it here is to get that trip mechanism out of the way. So the last time I saw that three-way switch was on a Quantum. So I don't know, was this made in the Quantum plant? Or uh, who made the wheel itself? But again, it's Bangladesh. I haven't seen too many places. I haven't seen a, a wheel from Bangladesh, so I see one now. There's two little indentations or slots here that correspond with the two little studs on this plastic bushing here. Those need to seat in those slots. If you don't get them in the slots, it's going to be proud. And then you're going to go try and uh, turn the, the handle and it's going to be a tight reel. How do you know you have it? Well, we have it there. It's flush to the case. They're not, it's not riding high. All right. We've oiled the bearing. Let's put some grease onto the pinion gear. In this case, I probably would caution you don't overload the pinion gear because it probably would ride up onto this click ratchet and may cause a little bit of an issue there. Let's go ahead and put this back in. Okay, I stopped the camera there for a minute. Some of you may have noticed that that little spring flew out. I got lucky. I found it. That little spring belongs in here and is the control for this. You'll see right now you don't have any tension on that. Well, we'll get the tension back on there by reinstalling the spring. That spring goes in here. It's seated just like that. Now we've got the tension back on that. Now we can go back to putting this together. So if that happened to you and you didn't know where that flew from, on the 
average reel, you would go and find the schematic for the reel. They're largely available on the internet. And I've had very difficult times finding things on Browning reels. And it's probably because they were job shopped reels. The Browning wasn't making them. They were contracting to have them made with the Browning name on them. And, um, well, if they're contracted reels, you've got uh, going to have some issues with support. I got ahead of myself. I can't put that on because the side plate goes under. Let's show you how to reassemble then, the first thing up. Kind of backing into it in reverse order now. We have the cross wind block goes next. A little bit of grease on that. While I'm doing that, if I haven't encouraged you already, uh, if you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, you leave that question in the comment section. I do try to answer it. There is a uh, phone number on my business card which follows most of my videos. I have to uh, apologize, but also advise you that that's the hardest way to reach me. If I'm doing videos, if I'm in the middle of a repair, if I'm on the floor of a flea market or something, well, I can't answer it. So I do apologize in advance. Just be aware of it. Remember that uh, little notch that we were talking about? You'll see the corresponding uh, V over here in the metal. You need to merge that angle with this notch. Sound like fun? Well, the manufacturer's provided you with a window to look through to do just that. Just trying to clean up a little bit of the grease that I didn't get before. And I'll show you how to do that. It's always something I miss. And our viewers are always quick to point it out. All right, now you can look through that hole, align the notch so that you can see the notch through that hole. You can start by kind of looking over your shoulder at it. And then and work it in. Once you merge that, it's time to go ahead and put the rotor back on, uh, side plate back on. I keep getting ahead of myself, I keep wanting to do that. And in order to put that side plate back on, we've got to attach the axle shaft. So light coloring of grease once you've cleaned that axle shaft up. Bring that down through the pinion gear. The flat side will face out. And we will align the hole in the axle shaft with the hole in the cross line block so that you can put that screw back in. Remember, you have that little uh, spring over there on the anti-reverse. Be careful. I'm trying to be careful. I've already shot it once. If I can, I'd like to avoid shooting it a second time. So keep your hands off that switch, and here's your button there and now the case will hold it in so you don't have to worry anymore about that. A little bit of grease onto that. The case has another bushing in it just like the other side. So we have two plastic bushings and we have a ball bearing up top. That's okay. It's uh, for this size reel. I just did a, uh, a video on one. I don't know which one's going to get posted first but I did a video on a 1980 Garcia Kingfisher reel without any ball bearings. It was about this size, a little, maybe a little bit bigger. No bearings, and boy, is it a smooth operator. So it doesn't have to be loaded up with ball bearings like today's modern manufacturers want to give you 13 of them. You don't need them, depending on the size of the reel. Sometimes it's a luxury, but you don't need to, to go buy it. And in this case, I'm sure for a small stream or a pond or a little lake or camp pier or that, you don't need those ball bearings at all. But the one on the pinion gear, I like the idea of that. That's the one that's going to move the most. So I uh, kind of encourage when shopping for a reel, I always get asked, well, what's the right number? 
there's a lot of wrong numbers, what's the right number? And the right number, generally speaking, is three. I'd like to see one where it is here on the pinion gear. I'd like to see one on each side of the main gear where we saw the, uh, the plastic bushings. But that's okay. If it doesn't have it, then I start looking at what, what's the purpose of the reel. Light tackle, you can get away with it. The heavier the, uh, or the bigger the size of the reel, well, it tends to, to complicate things a little bit. Looking for the tie-down screw for the rotor nut now. That'll go in next. I want the click ratchet and the spool shims. Those red shim washers control the height of the line lay on the spool. This one looks like it has one. When this reel came in, I took the line off of that spool. It seemed to be doing just uh, fine in terms of even spooling, but if it was riding high, it would mean that it's not, uh, not the spool is not up enough, and you'd have to add a shim. And if you were gathering line all the way on the bottom, it would say it's going too high, that you have to lower that spool so that the line can reach the top. All right, the handle's back on. Let's go see what's inside the spool here, and then we'll give it a test. We'll see how we did. So even if you're not fishing a reel like this, if you come across one at a yard sale or a garage sale or a tag sale or whatever it's called in your area, uh, you might want to buy one. I call them tuition reels. You're not going to make any money on them if you're in the business of reselling them, uh, but you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn how the reels are made and you'll be able to figure out how to service them. And you can catalog that in your, uh, in your repertoire so that when you get a small reel in like this, it won't be the first time you've seen it. And you won't be doing something at the customer's expense. Uh, and you will be aware of things like that little flying uh, spring on that anti-reverse. These are uh, plastic washers. You don't do anything with plastic. They're non-permeable. And if they're non-permeable, it doesn't make any sense to put greases and oils in it because, well, <laughs> they're not going to absorb. You have two of these. They're called keyed washers. You start with one of the plastic washers and dry washers. Then you go to the first of the keyed washers, which we've already done. You put the second washer in. The middle one is called an eared washer, and this is typical of a six-drag setup. Then you put the last of the drag washers in. You put the top washer on for the drag set. And this has got a lot of max drag for a small uh, pond reel. I'm impressed. As I mentioned, the one that I just did only had one, and it wasn't working. <laughs> All right. Uh, underneath here, there's just a little bit more little grease. Grease finds its ways in some unusual places. You do have a little clicker up here. You can... Put a drop of oil on that. That's what's going to make the noise when this spins in reverse, when the drag washer is, or when the drag is letting out with the fish running. And let's go ahead and take this button. So, brief story on these brownings. I had another browning reel. I couldn't find that button for anything. And it's, that's where you know about the support. Look at it. You're nice and tight. Back it off a little bit. Not being able to grab it. There you go. All right. And that's the way I like to leave them. I like to leave them with play in it because you don't compress the washers and uh, wear them down. Let's give it a spin. Let's see how we did. That is one nice smooth turning reel there. I like that. Not a very high gear ratio, but a very smooth reel. That's it. That's your Browning SFS 11. It's a nice reel. Circa the uh, late 80s, early 90s, when uh, probably when Browning was was doing more of this. And let's go put that uh, anti-reverse back on. So we know that that spring is doing its job. It's holding the tension on the button here. That one's ready to go fishing again. I'm going to put that right back on the rod that it was brought in with, which was the combination rod. And uh, this one will have a second chance to go fishing. 
to our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. To everybody, enjoy the art of wheel repair, enjoy fishing, that's what it's all about, right? Enjoy the friendships that you nurture because of it, and have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.